Today is a sad day in the world of classic computing. It's mid-October 2024 and Spotify has officially stopped working under Windows 7. I'm not sure exactly what date this happened but it's very recent. I would say within the last week. I just tried to launch it and it produces an error stating that the username or password is incorrect and it failed the same way in the sense that it just says the password is wrong when it stopped working under Windows 7. So something about the way that this logs in has been changed and whatever that change is is no longer compatible with this last release that runs under Windows 7. Now an additional thing that's going to happen is I am now going to get an email that says suspicious activity was detected on my account and it's going to force me to change my password. That's actually how I discovered that this stopped working. This computer I don't usually shut it off and so at some point during the night the day that it happened it reached this point where it logged itself out because it stopped authenticating or whatever it stopped doing and that morning I had an email that said there's suspicious activity on my account and I need to reset my password uh, so that was how I discovered that this had stopped working so this is now a problem this is a serious problem and unfortunately we're, we're it's getting harder to use Windows 7 now because we lost Discord a couple months ago and now we've lost Spotify. Those are two main programs that I use on a computer. Yes, there exists a web version. Yes, it works. It doesn't work well. And it's probably not going to work for long. It does not work under Windows XP and all the modern browsers for it that I have tried. That little program that we had for Windows XP, that third party program, also stopped working due to some type of authentication change. And I actually thought when that happened that it was going to get cut off on Windows 7 as well, but it lasted another month or two on Windows 7. The web player does launch and run under the last version of Google Chrome for Windows 7 and it more it looks the same works the same but the audio quality is not as good as it is with the desktop program and Sometimes it's a little glitchy and it like skips out a little bit. I'm not sure if that's just the web player is not very good or the specs on the computer were too low. I don't know. It, it could have something to do with the computer. But it's either way is not a good solution. Not to mention that it, it's probably eventually going to stop working. So now we have this dilemma with with this workstation and the one in the kitchen because these two units the sole purpose is to hear music and see videos and it doesn't do that it doesn't serve half of its purpose anymore so we're gonna have to do something about this I have said for a long time now that the future of online activities in my world is at some point going to have to turn into Linux because this is just a losing battle and I'm willing to fight that battle on my vintage laptops and so forth but I'm not willing to fight that battle on something like this which is dedicated purpose this thing it just plain needs to work and that's it so we are we we're going to have to change the system historically 
we could just throw another stick of memory and go to a newer version of Windows. Now that's more complicated because Windows 11 has all these ridiculous hardware requirements, um, which we're going to do a second video on on this whole fiasco. We're going to bypass those requirements and we're going to see how the system runs on a unit of this age. This is a Windows 7 era unit. It's got a, I believe it's a Core 2 chip actually. We'll just, I'll check it right now so we're not guessing. Let's get some information. It's a, a Core 2 Duo E7500 at 2.9 gigahertz with 8 gigabytes of memory, 64-bit operating system, and a conventional rotating hard drive. Now, this machine I had previously used over here in the living room at the main computer desk because I was using the Dell Dementia, uh, I think it was a 3000 under Windows XP here at this, at the music player area. And when that program under Windows XP stopped working, I just needed something at this desk that had a decent sound card. And for whatever reason, these Optiplex units, I think this is a 780. Yep, it's an Optiplex 780. These have pretty good sound cards. So I took this from the main computer desk and I put it here just for damage control. And I just threw something else I already had set up back at the computer desk. I had this set up with two monitors. It's got an expansion graphics card in there. And I did everything on this computer, including video editing. Core 2 Duo E7500 chip did everything on it. It played YouTube on two screens, 720p, no problem. It would take the videos off the camera. I could upload the videos. It would edit, it would take some time, but it would do it. Um, ran everything in a browser fine. 100% good enough for my daily use. And this, this is part of a bigger issue, is why are we obsoleting hardware that's still good? You now this computer sits here and plays music. There's no reason that we should not be able to use a machine of this specification to play music. In a normal situation, you know, the average consumer that's not technical is now forced to go buy a whole new computer with much higher specs just to be able to continue to play music. That's ridiculous. So, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there because I'm not buying a new computer. Um, so I'm going to try to put Windows 11 into this computer and we're going to see if it works. It might be unusably slow. I am going to swap out the hard drive for an SSD because Windows 10 and above are just not written well enough to run on a hard drive anymore. So we'll swap out to an SSD and we'll see what it does. I'm also going to install Linux. I'm, I'm downloading uh, Linux Mint 22 right now. I don't have a lot of experience with Linux because I've been pushing off my time learning it because I wanted to ride out the rest of the time on Windows 7 as much as possible. And while I'm still going to use Windows 7 on my workstations that I do various different tasks on, we kind of hit the end of the line on this. This is just not, it's just not practical to keep trying to patch this together for something that I don't interact with. You know, I, push play on the music and go do something else. So we'll try Linux on here and we'll try Windows 11 on here. I would rather run Windows solely because I like having the old screensavers on here. And I've tested this. You can take the old screensavers from Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows XP, throw them onto, um, actually I haven't tested Windows 95, but I've tested Windows, I believe Windows 98 through XP, and those screensavers will run 
under Windows 11. So it, I, I think that'd be my first choice, but I, I'm, I'm just not sure because Windows 11 is so bloated and poorly coded, like all the systems are now. I don't know if if this is going to work, but we'll see. It'll be an interesting test. So that's it. October 2024 is uh, kind of the final nail in the coffin for my dedicated units here in the living room to play music and in the kitchen on top of the refrigerator there. It's very unfortunate because this system, Windows 7, Windows XP, etc., were so vastly superior to what comes out today. What comes out today is just, it's just garbage. It's, it's pushed out as quickly as possible with as many features, so-called, fe that's what Microsoft calls them, features, I call them useless garbage. So many so-called features, all these, up I understand security updates, but they put all these stupid uh, baloney bloatware updates, and it's just, it's not quality anymore. Now, I, I am a firm believer in the theory of take the time to develop and test the product thoroughly such that when it goes out it actually works and that that mentality is just gone and unfortunately the computer the software industry it's turning into a race to the bottom who can put out the most updates who can pack in the most bloatware who can collect the most user data um, you know and and the whole idea of what's output a product that actually works good and consumers are satisfied with over time is gone. And you have Windows XP. Windows XP came out in 2001 and it did not get retired until 2000, um, was it 2014 I think? That's almost 15 years. And that's that's in, in a time where the computer is advancing leaps and bounds. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's slowed down, at least for the average user. Because nowadays you can buy a new computer to replace one from 10 years ago, and you're really not going to notice much of a difference. Maybe if it was running a hard drive to an SSD, you might notice that. But as far as processing power, once you get past the early renditions of of the quad core chips, the i3s, i5s, for for average user daily tasks, there's no difference between what's put out today. Whereas back in the 2000s, you know, you're going from Pentium 3, Pentium 4, to Core 2, and then to quad core. That, Windows XP survived that whole transition. It survived the transition from 32 bits is standard to 64 bits come on the market and become a standard. Windows XP was so stable and so reliable and so robust that it survived well over a decade of leaps and bounds of computer advancements. And nowadays, these systems, I mean, you're lucky if you get 10 years out of them before they're obsoleted. And even after those 10 years, they're often still not that stable. I mean, Windows 10, as a joke, is still not stable and is being shut down within a year. It's just not, it's not good. It's not good and it's it's caused me to lose a lot of interest uh, in, in the computer because it's just not what it should be. And I really enjoy going back on these old machines. I mean, even just the, the graphics alone, you log into this unit and you get this beautiful desktop with with colorful 3D icons it's it's just such a nice looking system the layout and everything is logical it makes sense it's easy to use and I come on here and it's like oh yeah this is why I like the computer and then you go on this new stuff and you've got well, Windows 11 is at least it's got rounded edges to the buttons but you've got flat lifeless graphics complicated and confusing interface bloat everywhere complication everywhere 
frustrates most users. It makes the system slower and heavier, frustrates the back end administrators. Just stinks. And this stinks too, but this is what it is and we have to deal with it. So we're gonna now try Linux. We're gonna try to force Windows 11 on there. We're gonna experiment with the two and whichever offers more of what I want, we're gonna go with. I would really like to maintain the screensavers on here. That is the second most important thing after it actually playing music like it's supposed to. But um, if we find that the Windows 11 is exceptionally slow because of the hardware, or I shouldn't say because of the hardware, because it's not because of the hardware. If we find that Windows 11 is exceptionally slow because of the poor, uh, the poor programming and the poor coding, then we'll have to go with Linux, or we find that it's unstable, we'll have to go with Linux. And vice versa, if we find that Linux is not stable, then we'll have to try to make Windows work. But that's a different video. Um, very disappointed by this, but we all knew the day was coming.